So all of the work that you do in terms of generating these minds that can appreciate these issues, the question is how do we facilitate in these individuals to actually go out and, and grab the net and say, yes, I want to do, I want to do something <laughs> to bring compassion into the world. <laughs> when people are feeling like they're running on empty, running for their lives, uh, really upset, in a lot of pain, flooded with negative emotions, it's a very rare being who has the mental training still to keep their heart open and loving toward others is possible. There are magnificent heroes of that who can do that, but most people can't. It's hard for me, certainly. So truly, helping people do what I call living more from the green zone in a realistic sense of not feeling so much that something's missing and something's wrong inside, but you're approaching life more on the basis of fullness and balance, resilient well-being, that creates an enabling condition for a compassionate world, but it's not a sufficient condition. Second, I do believe that there must be a moral component. There's no shortage of people in, it, you know, around the world, particularly people of great wealth, who live very comfortable lives and who've, you know, done a fair amount of therapy and uh, they have some kind of regular yoga practice or something. And on the whole, they still could not give a damn about other people. So it's not just enough to develop fairly high levels of personal well-being and internal an internal sense of being unhindered by you know, negative preoccupations, there must also be an ethical dimension. That certainly as the Buddha taught, he started there. He began with the dimension of, of virtuous conduct. And so I think that's really important to be able to talk about morality. And then that moves us, as I've done recently in these talks I've given in my Wednesday meditation online program, about the principle of non-harming extended in broader ways. And one of the major ways that we participate in systems of harm is we externalize our costs onto other people, which is a term from economics, but it's a way to think about what we do. We dump our litter in the street, we dump our anger on other people, or more broadly, we dump our carbon in the skies, or we dump our contagion on other people because we can't be bothered to wear a mask inside a crowded room. And um, so as people become more morally committed, they start thinking more about systems of harm, including, let's say, the non-human animals that they are participating in, or ways in which their own advantages I say that as a white male, um, are acquired through disadvantaging others. I mean, there's the luck of the draw, I'll call that privilege in some sense, you know, just the genetic lottery, intelligence, place of birth, and so forth. But then there's advantage. I'm advantaged as a white man in America through disadvantaging people of color and, and women and other systems as well. So we start paying attention to that. So I think that's really important. Beyond that, I think that there's no replacement for mass action. You know, I came of age in the 60s. I, I really watched collective action make enormous sweeping changes in America, which I think have also rippled out into the rest of the world and comparable changes happened elsewhere as well. Environmentalism, gay rights, women's rights, uh, citizen involvement in government, um, things like that, uh, you know, paying attention to animal rights, again, the genesis in the 60s. So maybe we'll start segueing here into what we can do in a, in a way that organizes us together so that we can have more and more of a shift into a, you know, a caring and sharing kind of society, as you put it really brilliantly in your magnificent review paper on this. Mm -hmm. um, how do we, in other words, build on to sum up the internal practices that can lead us to a stability of resilient well-being combined with moral commitments, particularly related to both non-harming and the promotion of benefit, both the, both the you could say, the negative and the positive forms of, moral, of morality. And third then, bring that into collective action that's sufficiently powerful to stand against the incredibly powerful forces of wealth and power that have run the world for the last 10,000 years for the benefit of the few and the harms to the many.